This is Jack Donovan, author of The Way of Men, and you're listening to Start the World. All right, I am joined today by Piero San Giorgio. Piero is the top author of books on survivalism in Europe, including Survive the Economic Collapse, Women on the Verge of a Societal Breakdown, and his latest and extremely relevant work, CBRN, Surviving Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Events, including the coronavirus. Uh, Piero, thanks for uh, coming on the show. Always a pleasure. Cool, cool. Uh, so uh, first, uh, you know, wh why don't you tell me a little bit about the situation in Europe, but also tell me about uh, your situation right now, because that, that looks pretty nice. Well, yes. It's, the, um, you know, it's, I, I need to watch back a few of these disaster movies to, to figure out what a real catastrophe looks like. Because this one looks pretty good compared to compared to to other back scenarios. Well, you know, when I started to analyze this crisis uh, early January, when I started to get data from from China, because it's part of my job to 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 a bit be aware and have this uh, these little uh, you know information points that that I gather across the world. Uh, you know, la last last few years was Ebola, and then there is you know the financial crisis. Maybe in the future, in the near future. So I get all these information. I try to figure out trends. I try to figure out um, you know an alert system. And uh, in January, I started to look at the data in China. And at the time, it was about 100 dead, and uh, and a few a few thousand people uh, infected by this new virus. And I started and actually made a video. Uh, about that on my YouTube channel, basically saying, guys, you know, be calm. Um, if this, uh, the worst case scenario, this is going, this is going to be one percent of the population of the world dead, and um, and which I think I was, you know, by luck on by uh, you know intuition, I think that is what is going to be. And I said, you know, worst case scenario, this is 80 million dead in the world, and probably mostly old and weak people. And um, so it's a kind of a natural selection. And after all, you know, this is going to be replaced in a year. You know, there's more than 100 million people born every year. So, you know, the crisis is not going to be medical. It's not going to be a, 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 a health problem. The problem is twofold. First one is that, like in China, there would be potentially here in Europe and in the U.S., overwhelming of the hospital system because we have a culture that we try to save everyone and therefore everyone gets treated and therefore the, the old and the weak get treated you know as much as we can and this overwhelms the capacity of hospitals because if you make the, the numbers if you make the math you know you you draw the exponential and i did that in january you draw the exponential and you draw the uh, the number the potential at the time we didn't have the right the correct number it was hard to know whether the mortality was high or low it was difficult to know we only knew when Italy got hit because it's um it's much more open society than China and we we kind of have the right numbers and it happened that Italy was the first big uh, country out of uh, in Europe at least uh, that was that was uh, taken by this uh, epidemic and uh, and then I started to see the the right numbers which is that basically we can expect uh, out of very old people something like 20 or 30 percent death rate. Uh, but overall, the population is under 1%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the odds of dying for people who are healthy and young people is almost zero. So I, I kept saying to people, you know, don't worry, don't panic. But as I said in all my books before for the last 10 years, prepare, buy some food, get everything ready. <laughs> You know, make sure that you have a place to stay because it's going to end up into quarantine, just like in China. And, mm -hmm. and now Europe is in exactly the same situation that we had China in January, which is to say to see hospital completely overwhelmed, uh, you know, people dying uh, in hospitals. And, and again, you know, it doesn't need you don't require a lot of people very ill or dead to overwhelm the capacity of a hospital. You know, hospitals are even the biggest ones are just a few thousand beds and the 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 urge so the the, the the beds that are in special rooms for emergency and and really high advanced care they're not that many there are maybe hundred in a hospital in a for a million people you know on average in developed countries so very quickly you overwhelm them because especially western europe has a lot of old people and so it was obvious that the crisis would overwhelm the political system 
which eventually, too late, uh, did uh, the, the right thing, but too late, which is to say, well, look, there's only two ways to, to fight such an illness. The first one is to let it burn through the population, and they cannot do that because politically, it basically say, well, we're willing to kill 20% of our old people, and usually right. they vote. <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so you can do that. So basically, they said, we're going to put everyone into containment, and it's going to last two months. Actually, they are saying one month, but you know, I know it's going to be two months because you need you need the cycle of contamination to go through one or two, at least two cycles, and then maybe a third. So it's gonna it's gonna push for two months. That's as far as we know today. We don't know if there's going to be a second wave. Maybe maybe in in September October depends when how you need the whole world now with with the communication and the travels to be um, uh, to be growing immune immune. Um, uh, immune systems that 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 are able to cope with such a virus. So uh, I said to to all the people who who, who, who who listen to me and view my channels and so on, and mostly in France, and I said, well, look, guys, four years ago I came out with a book which is finally out in English, which is CBRN, right. and in this book, of course, I treat other topics than uh, than the virus. I, we talk, we talk about actually I didn't write this book alone. I must say that. You know, I'm I'm not a scientist. I'm I'm not a virologist. I'm not a nuclear expert. So I got I got to write the book with an expert, and this expert is the anti. The, he was the head of the cell of the major anti-terrorist unit of the French, of the French um, uh, police, armed forces, in fact. And this guy is a chemist. He knows science. He understands the nuclear, radiological, chemical, and biological effect. He has been into war zones where there had been ch chemical weapons used. He uh, has studies in the laboratory, such as such as the P4, like the one in Wuhan, and he knows how it works. So we, we wrote this book, and one, and one quarter of the book is on epidemics, the, the biological problems. And we explain the history, because it's very important to give people the perspective so that they're not scared. It's not a... You see, fear is very important. As, as we are seeing now with people rushing to buy toilet paper because they think that they're going to have diarrhea or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know what that's about. Like, that was the thing. Yeah, you know, I, I went and filled up on, on protein, uh, <laughs> you know, exactly. not, uh, not toilet paper. Uh, probably Western society is on an anal, anal stage, you know, like child, has regret <laughs> to children <laughs> stage. Yeah, but, the Freudian uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually mean that quite seriously. But anyway, so so the yeah. idea is that to give you the context, so we explain the past epidemics. You know, the right. the, 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 the 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 let me say the the plague of Athens, the plague, the Black Plague. We mm -hmm. we give an extensive report on the Ebola crisis of of 2015, and we actually mentioned four years ago the risk of coronavirus because there was this MERS-CoV. And um, which is very similar, if uh, perhaps a little bit less contagious than the one we have now, this new one. And um, we remind the readers that this, is, has, this has been the plight of mankind forever. There's always been plagues since we started to live in cities and living with animals. And right. uh, why it always starts in China? Because there are more people in China and it's more dense than everywhere else since, since the dawn of time and therefore the plagues come from China, the, the illnesses come from China, and it's the way it is. It's not because of the Chinese, it's the way it is. <laughs> right. uh, and it was funny, by the way, to see that whenever this crisis started, the old way of thinking, because this is going to change, believe me, yeah. the old way of thinking was to say, oh, we shouldn't blame Chinese, it's, we sh you know, we are racist, da, da, da. forget it. Now, all this crazy stuff is going to disappear because people now have, have had, will experience a little bit of a crisis. And mm -hmm. it will remind them that all this shit about gender, uh, you know, misappropriating, misnaming people, misnaming, all of this thing is going to be, you know, thrown away as it should have a long time ago for being something that is complete nonsense. Now we have something serious. People are dying. Still not a lot. We just passed 10,000 people today. In the long run, this is not uh, about death because, in fact, 10,000 people in two months is just you know, normal people dying anyways, because the, the people who are dying probably would have died anyway in a few months anyway. So it's like the it's like when there were the, when there are heat waves that kill old people. Right. Well, if it wasn't the heat wave, it would have been the next winter. So this is not about the death. It's about the psychological effect of having some unknown 
illness that can get to you and make you ill. And this brings us back to some ancestral fears that we have in our DNA about, you know, generations and generations of people fearing these epidemics because for for the for the whole length of mankind we had no idea why this was happening we, we mm -hmm. thought it was the air we thought it was the gods we, we thought it was some sort of punishment but now now of course we understand why and but but our but our dna still doesn't so we have these fears and um and so we explain all that in this book so people say oh how can this book help me for this crisis i say can't it's too late Right, right, right. I can help you for the next one. And uh, and the next one you know, can be another virus, can be a, a nuclear disaster. It can be a chemical plant blowing up next to where you live. It can be a, a, you know, a nuclear war. We hope not, of course. But, um, but this is what we deal in this book. So to, to go back to your question about Europe, well, what happened is that after Italy, mm -hmm. uh, every country is shutting down. So... What is quite amazing is we, that we have the first engine of the world, which is China, which has shut down. Mm -hmm. And now we have another engine of the world, which is Europe, which has completely shut down. And right now we have, I guess, the United States, another engine of the world, shutting down. And then there's no more engines of the world. So the, the world economy is going to be in apnea for the next two months. Oh, yeah. And this is oh, quite yeah. Never happened. Yeah. Never happened. We never had... Everything stopping on the whole world, or almost everything stopping, because you still have people working here and there. But um, we are, there's going to be incredible effects that we don't foresee about. Maybe people will find out that uh, uh, on the on the on the on the, on the, on the um, you know strategic scale, they will find out that maybe maybe it's a good idea to have factories of antibiotics in the country you live. You know, right. have everything right. in China. Maybe it's better to bring back some manufacturing where you live, not to have everything uh, depending of, of a foreign country. Uh, on a more, on a more perhaps economical level, you will have uh, people saying that maybe we don't need all that shit that we consume and that we 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 feel uh, to be um, habituated to consume and, and have every day. Maybe we don't need all this because we like we live two months without it. That's interesting. And on a personal level. There might be a lot of babies born in six, in nine months, and uh, there could be a lot of divorces very cool soon because people <laughs> to live with their wives and and children and families for for the first time every day, 24 by seven. Probably, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I I know a lot of friends, uh, Ryan Mickler and my friend Tanner. Uh, got a lot of guys who uh, you know speak to men and so forth and have families. Uh, you know, they're taking this time to actually talk about you know actually how to get along with your family and, uh, and uh, spend more time with your family and build a strong family culture and things like that. So they're, you know, they're all, all different people are finding opportunities in this uh, in a way as well. And I think there'll be a, a definitely a boom, as you said, culturally. Uh, I've heard from my, from my buddy, Greg last night that uh, there are all kinds of uh, people who are against guns, uh, you know, <laughs> last week. Uh, they are now surprised that they can't get a gun delivered to their house through Amazon. You know, uh, they're like, oh, really? It's harder than that? You have to go through all these things? Oh, wow. Oh, OK. You know, they're, 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 there's a boom on gun things. And I think that, uh, you know, there's all the guys who teach survivalism classes, all the guys who teach preparedness and so forth. There's going to be a huge boom of that after after this is all over, because, uh, you know, I think. Yeah. And as you said, all these these microaggressions and, and tiny problems that are just bullshit of people, you know, trying to one up each other. Uh, yeah, I think when people have a, a real problem, uh, a lot of those are going to get turned, the volume is going to get turned down, as they would say in Fight Club, you know, like the, the volume is going to get turned down on those. So that'll be interesting. You know, it'll be, it'll definitely be interesting to see how it affects culture. Yes, definitely. And um, a lot of unforeseen. We, we're going to we're, we are going to find other things we cannot imagine today. So it's fascinating. You know, for example, one of my theories that I explain in 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 the, in the book is that the the Black Plague of the 14th century actually is the start of the uh, European domination on the world, because people stop stopped believing in God. You know, when when you at the time people were extremely pious. They were praying all the day, every day, on every topic. You know. Uh, waking up, going to sleep, uh, they were praying that they wouldn't die during the night and so on. And then suddenly half of the people die in four days. 
everyone you know around you is ill and half of them die. And Where you say, is your God now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. What have you done for God? What have you done? Right, what is right. your sin? But your yeah. kid, your six, six months old children, they haven't sinned. So you start to, and then the priest who goes from one dead to another, die yeah. even more because they get infected yeah. more. And so the religion became much less important. People started to be free, started to think. The, because there were less people, the value of the individual started to become uh, bigger. You couldn't slave people around because people were also rich. They inherited the money from their family who were dead. And so they had bigger lands. So they started to have uh, more demands for freedom, for development. The, there were less people, so you needed more automation. So you had the first industrial re revolution that started to be seeded, to have machines, to get the, the, the textile going, to have the early innovation in the in agriculture for, for Europe. And from there you start and you have a reformation, you have the uh, Protestant ethics, and you have uh, exploration of the world. And you have domination on Europe. I mean, I'm summarizing, but, but there is an interesting cultural shift. So maybe what's going to happen is something just as radical from such a crisis, which I mean, for, sh for sure, it's not the killing as much as the Black Plague. And, you know, this is, by the way, one of the reasons why, you know, the, the, maybe this virus has been, uh, is got out by accident from a, from a laboratory, probably. But it's not a bioweapon. <laughs> and thankfully, because uh, if it was a bioweapon, it would not kill less than 1% of the people. It would kill much, much, much more. And it would kill young people because bioweapons that kill old people are not exactly a, a weapon of war. You know, that right. makes no sense. You, yeah. you want to have yeah. a, a bioweapon that kills young, productive weapon, uh, you know, army age men and, uh, and not old people. So this is not a bioweapon. It probably was something that has been uh, twiggled with because the, it's part of the research. But probably the protocols um, uh, in that laboratory in Wuhan were not followed strictly and therefore it got out. And I think from there, all governments across the world went into a panic mode. And I don't buy the conspiracy theories on this. I think it's really an incompetent uh, overreaction that blew th this into a let's kill our economies uh, because, because that's the responsible thing to do and because politically that's the only way we can do something. But um, right. But th this is kind of an amazing reaction to an illness that is not, I mean, it's, it's, it's worse than the flu, for sure. I mean, that's yeah. that for sure. But it's not that bad. It's not such a big killer. So very interesting, very interesting reaction. It's, we are living history with a big, with a big age. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I always think incompetence is a better, uh, more reasonable uh, explanation for things than uh, conspiracy. Uh, in yeah. most cases, you yeah. know. And by the way, you know, I always, if I make a small digression, you know, conspiracies mm -hmm. do exist. There sure. are, you know, uh, there's been a million people without knowing what they were doing involved into building an incredible weapon, which is the atom bomb. And right. For four years, one million people had no idea what they were doing, but it ended up with an atom bomb. And this was a conspiracy yeah. because it was secret. Sure. Now, there are others, but most of the time, the easiest explanation, if you take Occam's razor's, uh, uh, you know, uh, reasoning, is that people are dumb, <laughs> and people who are dumb yeah. make dumb decisions. And we are yeah. in a dumb world, you know. It, we are in, a, as as you write in your books, we are in a, in a world where, you know, very few things make sense anymore. And and this yeah. is a very interesting wake up call. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Yeah, it definitely is. Fifty years ago. This thing would have been uh, no news. This yeah. would have been, yeah, that's another, it's another, it's another flu. Who cares? Right. But now we have the information. We know exactly what's happening. We have maybe too much information, and and so it becomes it becomes a real threat, even if statistically it isn't. So so it's um, I'm not saying it, it isn't. You know, it, you know, this is the paradox of it. It's uh, it is a threat by definition because yeah. if you, if you overwhelm the hospitals. Uh, well, then, if, what, if, what if you have a heart attack? What if your kid breaks his leg and needs to go to the hospital right now because it has an open, open fracture, you know? Uh, what, if, um, why, what if you have appendicitis and you get to the hospital and half of the, half of the doctors and nurses are ill because they have been working on ill people? Uh, they are over, overworked. They don't sleep. They get, them, they get very ill because they are tired. 
um, then you don't have modern medicine and then you have extra mortality from people who are not cured from things that are easy to cure. And this is, right. the, this is a problem that is created by, by, this, uh, by this phenomenon. And, uh, and uh, there's going to be a lot of um, analysis that will be done in six months, in a year, in, in the future about all the things that were wrongly decided, all the wrong decision and all the, the, the processes that were done pretty wrong in, in right now. But of course, it's not the time to blame. It's the time to, you know, we have to play the game. We have to say to people, sure. okay, we want to be contained. Let's stay contained. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what do you think, because uh, you've obviously written about economic collapse and so forth, what do you think the economic uh, repercussions of this are going to be? Because that's uh, that's actually when I went to the grocery store, when I because I don't watch the news because I don't believe anything that people on yeah. the news say 90 percent because I've never not been lied to by a reporter. So why yeah. wouldn't they be lying all the time? Yeah. So um, but uh, the, the guy I live with, uh, he watches a lot of sports and he came in the room and he said they just canceled basketball. <laughs> and in America, you know, it's like that's billions and billions. That's a lot of money. And when you talk about shutting down sports. That's a huge amount of money. I mean, all the concession stands, all the uh, all the TV shows based around them, I mean, it's huge. And I'm like, well, okay, people are making like billion dollar decisions now. This must be a big deal. And that's when I went to the grocery stores and started buying stuff because I was like that, you know, because if people, they're not just telling you things. When people tell you, who cares? You know, but uh, when, when, you know, people start making big decisions, uh, that's a big deal. So a lot of people, small businesses and large businesses are, losing their asses. I'm sure somebody is buying up a ton of stocks. Yeah. Uh, but aside from that, uh, what, what do you think is going to happen? Well, fortunately, because it's not, so, it's not such a bad illness, mm -hmm. um, after this crazy time, the economy will start. Now, true, we've never tried this. We never shut down global economy and we never had to start it up. However, this crisis is, um, happens at a time where at least on, on paper, we still have a lot of oil. So it mm -hmm. will be possible. We have the energy to restart it. Sure. And because obviously people don't care about debt, interest is at zero. And mm -hmm. the U.S. just dropped, uh, just lowered its uh, interest rates uh, to zero. Well, that means that um, we can borrow our way into uh, restarting the economy, but it means that we are further digging the grave of the economy eventually, because that, that we are going to multiply by two or by three the debt. Today, the Fed is injects is $150 billion every day in the stock market and the banks, because we want to make sure that this gets keeps being alive. So we are shocking, you know, the, we are electric shocking the system until we end up this crisis and people go back to work. So right. we can do that because we know there's still oil, there's still energy. We don't know how long, but at least for this year, it's going to be okay. So we're going to go through it, and I think it will restart. So in fact, you know, you know, I think this is an opportunity. You know, buy buy stocks when they are low. Are we at the bottom? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? That's I'm not a, a financial analyst, but certainly the recession is there. I mean, uh, you you basically. Uh, shutting down two months of the world economy to zero, of course, it's a recession. It's a, you know, it's a monstrous recession. And even if some minimal work is being done because, you know, mm -hmm. the hospitals work, you have basically, you now you need to, you know, you need to save the banks, you need to save the airlines, you need to save the travel industry, you need to save the tourist industry, you need to, to save all these, those big industries will be saved by the, by money, by the money printed out of thin air as usual. The more difficult thing will be to save the little guys. People, yeah. Okay, so people like you and I, we write books. Okay, we will cope. But a lot of people, the plumber, the electrician, the guy who has a little construction firm, he has salaries to pay. Maybe he's to pay three or four guys. Now, so he will have costs for two or three months, but very little revenue, if no, no revenue. So who's going to help these little guys? So right. it seems that everywhere, governments, you know, because they have free money, they will lend out. I know a lot of small businesses here in Switzerland, even in Switzerland, who is a very liberal, uh, economic liberal uh, society, is going to hand out uh, a lot of money to small businesses to help them go through uh, paying the rent, um, 
paying salaries, because otherwise you are destroying the economic uh, tissue, the, the economic strata. Because you can, yeah. uh, you know, if people stop paying rent, they end up losing the house, they get in the street, and then it's a it's a it's a it's a disaster. That's a real economic disaster. Right. So right. they're they're going to save the economy. I, I am certain that they're going to print their way through it through this. But um, it's one of those last cartridges that there is in the system, because um, you know they can still do it at zero interest rate and uh, and with uh, and with um, energy that is around. But uh, the next hiccup is that when energy becomes scarce, then then you have no more cartridges because you cannot you cannot really go to negative interest rates for that long and not not very negative. Uh, and you can certainly not raise interest with this kind of debt. So basically, the tools that econom economists, economists have to manage an economic country or a global econo economy, they're being stuck in the, in the machine one after the other. And, and then when you have no more tools to pilot the thing, the next big crisis, when, when energy hits you know, some, some drops because oil is becoming scarce and so on, or certainly when the next, uh, maybe it's not, it's a pandemic, maybe it's something else. Well, then you have to, you have to, you, you, you cannot work it anymore. So this is why, you know, what you said about buying food and so on, having resiliency, having autonomy. For, for people like me and people who prep or are survivalists or whatever, this changes nothing. We are, I'm at home, I'm in the farm, I grow my garden. Yeah, sure. I went to I went to the groceries. I didn't buy toilet paper, but I bought mangoes and bananas and oranges and lemons because I can't grow them where I where I am. Right. And for the next two months, I'm gonna have a freshly squeezed orange juice and uh, and I'll have uh, bananas for the well, not for two months, but I'll have maybe for one more week bananas and mangoes and the kids and me will have uh, fresh fruit from all over the world. But of course, then it stops, and then it's going to be cabbage and potatoes and and the stuff that grows in in the garden. But right. um, and that's okay. But uh, but that's the idea: is that it doesn't change. You know, this we are we are ready for any crisis, any time, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fine. Yeah, I think you know some people. I, obviously, I think like I said, there's probably going to be a little bit of a boom on people taking that a little bit more seriously, but. Yeah, I couldn't help when I was going through the, the grocery store uh, and everybody's buying everything and whatever. I mean, I live in an area that's f fairly poor, actually. Um, it's a small town, but, it, you know, it's it's kind of a, a lot of people are, are poor. And I noticed the ramen was cleared out. Yeah. And because uh, people, that's one thing that, the, you know, people who really live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. They can't just run to the grocery store and buy two months worth of food. No, you know, that that's that's what's interesting. Actually, it'll be interesting to see what happens with all these shutdowns where people were like confined to their houses in major cities because that's what's happening. I mean, I'm still free to drive around and go hiking sure. and whatever out here. It's just we can't go to restaurants. Yeah. You know, basically is all that's happening. But uh, restaurants and gyms. But uh, and it may go further than this, but I'm pretty out in the country, so I'm not I, I doubt I doubt it'll get there. Yeah. But uh <clears throat> But I mean, even still, yeah, yeah, for people to buy that much food, I mean, uh, you can see that the, the money's just not there for those people. So it'll be interesting to see what yeah. what happens with that, it, especially in big cities, because people live hand to mouth in big cities too. And uh, it, like I think L.A. just shut down uh, yesterday. Like all of California, uh, they're you know basically under quarantine or whatever i keep wanting to say house arrest but you know <laughs> quarantine but uh they're, right. they're, yeah 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 but uh you know so I, i'm like all those people I, I talked to somebody who has resources and can do that last night but uh uh you know all the people who are you know selling tacos in in los angeles like what are they doing you know like uh they can't go to the grocery store and buy up all the food right now so we'll see how, how people handle that, that'll be interesting. Yeah, it's there's going to be a need of, um, which is not going to happen, but um, this, everyone will need introspection after this crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm afraid they will go into even more, we want more help from the government, we, will, we want higher minimum wage, we want more 
right. social handouts. This is going to be a reaction. In, whereas, sure. whereas in reality, you need more introspection saying, why do you need to live in the U.S. if you're, if you're Mexican or Salvadorian? Because, right. you know, Los Angeles is a shithole and it's yeah. dangerous and there's no water. Yeah. And if, the, if that city shuts down, you know, that's how many million people living in a place that is a desert. You don't want to be yeah. in that. Yeah, I, I love L.A., but like uh, I, I recognize that because I lived there for three years. Yeah. And uh, I definitely recognize that. I mean, I lived for I, I worked in Beverly Hills while I was there, but the haves and the have nots are very close together. Yeah. And uh, there's Beverly Hills and then there's Compton. And then there's uh, there's, uh, you know, and, and yeah, that's the kind of place that could just blow up into yeah. a mess, you know, just because of that. There, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of mansions to raid. <laughs> yeah, let let's let's say that um, you know it's uh, it's fate. It's not. Uh, I'm not gonna cry for 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 that. It's just the way it is. I mean, people should know. And and actually, many rich people have have ranches in or houses in Montana, in Utah, oh, yeah. and in 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 on Lake Tahoe. And you know, the rich people usually, you know, when they think ahead, they move. However, what you say about poor people, it, it's very true. The real introspection is to think that, you know, I'm not a socialist, therefore I will not say on uh, why we don't help more the poor. This is not the way to do it. It's actually right, the opposite. Right. It's yeah, to have yeah. people be responsible. Because I know a lot of poor people, and they tell me, I say, oh, okay, how can I do because I don't have money at the end of the month to buy the food and so on. And sure, I say, sure. well, look, um, how about you make send me a copy of your credit card uh, expenses and a copy of all your bills that you pay every month? And mm -hmm. one of the, you know sometimes people do that. They send it to me and I help them for free. And I and I look at the the bill and it's um they have more okay they have the mortgage they have the the the, the, the rent or whatever and then they have uh, the 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 monthly payment for TV monthly payment for for fridge. Monthly payment for the car, monthly monthly payment for the, the the game console for the children, and so on and so on. And the list right. is long of stuff that they have to pay every month. So first of all, they never pay anything cash. They all pay on credit, which makes right. it more expensive, and 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 so on. And of course, after you pay it means that you pay everything twice to have it now, to have it right now, of things you probably don't really need. If you're poor, right. you don't have the TV, uh, you know, buy uh, get get books for free in the library. Uh, you don't need a TV, uh, but we are in a culture that pushes for consumption. And of course, the, sure, the more sure. poor people, the less educated, the more gullible. And I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm just saying it's unfortunately the way it works. Um, often they get into the, the most extreme consumption that is not good for them. And, and, and you, you've also been into, you know, the tough spots in life. And I wasn't I like that when I was young. I had no TV when I had no money. You know, yeah. if I wanted to entertain, I went outside and tried to make a, a buck trying to entertain people. My, you know, uh, I, I never paid to go into nightclub, but I found women who would pay for me. You know, that's what I was doing when I was 18. I wanted to go into nightclub, but I couldn't. I, I, I was much more thin than I'm now. So that's how I survived to go out because I wanted to have fun. But I found women who were 40. And they were happy to have a young guy, which had lot, lots of hair <laughs> and, and, and fit, who wanted to go out with them. And yeah, right. you know, whatever, you know, you know, either, either, either you find a way or you make one. But um, resourcefulness is, is important. But um, I, I'm, I'm not saying that it's the people's fault, but eventually you are responsible of your own life. And, and you can basically at any point just say, well, I don't need the fucking TV. I don't need the DVDs. I don't need the... The, the, the console of games. I don't need Netflix. I don't need, you can throw a lot of things away in your life and then, and, the, and then you find out that at the end of the money, you have money. And oh, you yeah. Can, okay. And you can, and everybody's, everybody's probably doing that right now. I mean, uh, except for the extremely rich, you know, who don't have to care. But I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm looking at stuff. I'm going through like, maybe I don't need to belong to four gyms right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that. Maybe that's not a, a need. You know, like maybe I need to be a little bit less ridiculous about that kind of stuff. Cause you know, I'll probably see a dip at some yeah. point from, from book sales or whatever. I'm like, I need to maybe, maybe cancel some stupid subscriptions and, and so forth. You know, I, I did the same the last few days because I went around to see all my neighbors and say to them, look, most probably there's not going to be any problem in terms of violence in where we live. Right. However, what do you 
have at home in terms of guns? I'm just curious. Do you have enough? Most of them are Swiss, so they have whatever they need. But one or two, especially the younger ones, they didn't have any. So I said, well, look, here's the deal. I have way too many. So how about I sell you one for, for free uh -huh. and you sell it back to me at the end of the crisis for free? Uh -huh. So I just kind of loan you one of my guns. So I have to do it officially with a proper contract. Sure. And you get one of my, I get you some guns. And um, here's some ammo, here's a gun. If something happens, anyway, we need to defend the whole area, the whole village. We don't do a, we don't defend the house. That makes no sense. We defend the right. area. So, you know, so we do this kind of thing. And it's it's also a show of trust because it's not like you're selling a can of, uh, of, 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 of beans. You're selling a properly functioning gun. Sure, sure. So you need to, you need to, you need to, you know, be a, uh, uh, trustworthy and and uh, but he knows I have as well and I know I'm trained and I know I train at the range and just as you do we tra I train with some like, former special force guy for the last ten years so yeah I think I can cope uh, for for a while but um, but um, yeah it's uh, you need to create this bond and this is actually probably the the best hope that we can have from this crisis is that um, we are going to learn to know our, our neighbors. And if we do it right, uh, get this into a positive working uh, collaborative relationships. Because indeed, some people have planned this for years and, and therefore they have stuff that I have at home, food and, and medicine and whatever. And maybe they don't. So it's a kind of say to say, look, I have stuff that you may need. You know, you're my neighbor. I, you know, I, I need you to do well. So if you need anything, just come to me. I'll... I'll I'll, I'll make sure to help you if I can. I'm not going to bring you stuff like this because I don't know what you need, but just know that I, I've, I have a deep preparation and they know. And if you need anything, don't, don't hesitate. Come to see me if your kids have a problem. I have a uh, lot of medicine and, and, and supplies for, for health and stuff. You know, don't just do come because I trust you. You need to trust me. We're in the same village. We are, you know, what I prepare, not just for me. And my family i also prepare for you and next time i hope you will be more prepared but for the moment you know trust me i can help you and and we will learn and we will grow as small communities um better to be better bonded better linked and 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 this is a good crisis and once again we are lucky this crisis is a stroke of luck because this is not a very bad illness this is not, uh, you know, a zombie flu or zombie virus. This is <laughs> right, right. You know, this is uh, this is just it's going to be one percent of the people dying. So okay, in the in the US, this may mean that in a year when we will count the dead, it's going to be three million people. Now this yeah. is not it's not nothing, but it's just one percent. You know, and it's not um, it's not twenty year olds. So. Yeah. It's, uh, we have to be we have to be you know cold about this data and and basically it means that this is an opportunity to learn how to be prepared and I you know when I when I evacuated the city to come to the farm because I live in both places right uh, I, uh, I I figured out a lot of mistakes I did I said oh I didn't take a printer for example how am I going to get the children at school for the next two months I didn't have a printer here oh okay. So I need to print the lessons that the teacher send them. It's a little thing. It's I mean, I can live without a printer and I can live without school. But uh, if they want to keep doing the school for the next two months, I needed a printer. So I had to go back, take the printer, take a lot of other stuff and bring it back. And then uh, what if someone bur burglars the apartment I have in the city while I'm here? Do I, I do I have anything, you know, dangerous or precious um, removed? So I had to put a lot of stuff uh into uh, to bring them here just so, so that there's no uh, you know like um, you know I have guns at home in, in in the city as well so I just wanted to make sure that I brought back everything here so that if someone burglars the apartment they don't take whatever gun I have at home okay they are in a safe and so on but you never know so I just wanted to make sure that there is no um, complications because then if the police says oh you have been burglared why you, you must come down and and, you know, I'd, I'd rather be nice and near here for the next two months and it's going to be fine. Right. Right. Yeah, it'll definitely be a, a good time. Um, it shows the importance of local networks. 
you know, and having, having, uh, knowing people around you, you know, cause we rely on the internet a lot. And, uh, you know, I certainly have in the past as well. Uh, you rely on the internet, to, to, to connect to people and so forth, but, uh, having some kind of local network and support system, uh, is, is hugely important. And I've talked about that before. And, yeah. uh, you know, and so it's, uh, I think it, uh, maybe a lot of people think a little bit more about that. And also, do you think it'll have an effect on <clears throat> kind of the, the open border around the world, uh, no, no particular border in mind, but the, the idea that, uh, states don't matter and so forth. And, and I feel like, you know, if maybe this is a teachable moment in terms of, well, you know, if, if you don't have borders, where do you shut it down at, you know, to a certain extent, uh, you know, if, if small, small governments can react to things and shut down, but, uh, big world governments can't. Yeah. And, and, and basically the idea is that as long as we have this world government, which it is, um, they, they are not willing to shut down borders. To give you an example, in January, January 24th, the World Health Organization basically recognized that this was a serious epidemic, not yet a pandemic, but they said it's an epidemic. And um, But they were against uh, advising to shut down flights from China. Well, then it means that you, you, you have decided not to contain the thing. And right. at the time, it wasn't a conscious decision. It was basically ideology. It was just, well, we can't shut down free travel. You know, travel is, duh. But that's how people get the illness too. And the people sure. in Italy got it from China. So, so from, from traveling, you know, business people who, who work in, uh, in uh, we still don't know if it's an Italian. It doesn't matter anyway if it was an Italian going to China for business or if it was a Chinese, who, because Italy is a big center for uh, textile manufacturing, a lot of Chinese live in Italy, yeah. and uh, and uh, you, you don't exactly know how, and it doesn't matter. But eventually, yeah, you 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 need to shut down the border, especially after the Chinese New Year. That was a that was a no brainer. But uh, they decided the that um, you know they wanted to um, uh, save the economy at the cost of the health, and at the po and and then they they kill the economy, and they they it cost them the health. Fortunately, it's not that bad. But at the time, you know, when we when we were looking at the data from China, we had no idea if the Chinese were weren't were saying the truth or not. Maybe the data is 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 much higher, and and so we right. couldn't know. And they trusted the data from China, which was pretty mild in in reality, but um, but it could have been ten times worse, hundred times worse, a thousand times worse, and we, we didn't know. So they right. took immense risk on our health, and and uh, and there's going to be a lot of dead people. As I said, three million people dead potentially in the U.S. The same same amount in Europe, and uh, this is going to be the World Health Organization's uh, responsibility, by definition. So there's going to be uh, a lot of heads that will roll, um, sadly, uh, uh, figuratively, but. Um, that means that the culture and the ideology needs to change. So perhaps right. we need to think, you know, we have a skin. Skin is a protection against from the outside to the inside. And, uh, you know, nature wants to kill us all the time. So we yeah. need to protect ourselves from nature, from bacteria, from everything. And so it means that uh, maybe we have to reconsider this. I'm not very hopeful on that, on that, on that. Yeah. But definitely yeah. it will bring back the debate on borders and... Uh, you know, maybe we should tell, for example, to a lot of people in the world that they should not come to us because we're full of virus. So stop coming <laughs> to the Western world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it'll definitely be interesting to see how that pans out. So uh, before we wrap up, um, I guess, what do you think? You know, obviously, so you're saying you think it's about a two-month problem? Possibly. I mean, obviously, yeah, we don't know. A, we don't, there's but, phases. The current phase is going to be two months because if you have everyone at home and no one gets out and, and gets uh, infected or infects other people, eventually in 15 days, everyone you're at home with, if you're infected, also is infected. And either and you, as for yourself, you either die or you're safe. And statistically, you will be safe. You will be immune. And right. the, so it's about 15 to 20 days incubation. So the first 15 to 20 days, you're home alone with your family. 
And during these 15, 20 days, you get immune or you die, but mostly you get immune. And then the next 15 to 20 days, it's your family who now get it, who now has gotten it because you live in the same area. Right. At the end of this, another 20 days, um, they either died or are immune, which probably means they're immune. So it's going to be at least 40 days for sure minimum. That is the logical and epi epidemiological minimum. And then you add another 20 days to be safe. And that means that after 60 days, everyone is either immune or hasn't got it. And that right. means that in, in this part of the world that we had uh, these kind of quarantines, we're, we're free from, uh, from the virus. Now, if the rest of the world has not done that and there are still places with virus to go, there's right. going to be a second ef effect. I don't know when, whether it's in six months or in a year, where people who are still getting infected travel back here. It starts a second phase, which is going to be probably uh, of a, on a low, even lower scale. So it probably will not mean another quarantine in, in the six months or so. That is a logical aspect, unless the virus mutates into something worse, which is not not what should what a virus does usually usually viruses um when, when okay when you have a lot of a lot of people together you can have a, a worse uh, mutation that is more killing that is a, a bigger killer that survives because it still finds a lot of hosts but usually if it kills too fast uh, then it cannot spread so that mutation eventually dies out whereas if it mutates into something that kills much less um, well, then that that new mutation becomes uh, the most common one, and it makes you a little bit ill, and that's it. Because, and this has been the case for all, all viruses forever. They always mutate to something less less lethal. It makes mm. sense. It's logical because you have, we we don't understand what is exactly a virus. It's a piece of uh, it's a piece of um, living organism that requires some RNA from a cell to duplicate. But it's not really alive in, if you look at any definition of what a, a, a living being is. However, it has a strategy, and the strategy is to, come to, to, to replicate as much as possible. Right. But for that, it should kill as least as possible. Otherwise, it's not efficient long term. You know, uh, the, the success of a, of a living being is that uh, it um, spreads and, and, and dominates the world. For example, today in the world, the most... Uh, dominating uh, uh, living being is probably wheat and corn because they are they have used humans to be spread around the world. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Um, say the most numerous species <clears throat> in the world is probably is wheat and corn, so the most efficient uh, human being is that and not humans. But uh, we, are, we are close to, to them. Anyway, it's almost an inside joke with, within uh, biologists. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> so, and... and uh, what do you think when this all you know clears up uh, you know and the dust settles uh what do you think uh, people should do uh where the action steps do you think that they should take well i'll be i'll be a whore and sell my book well of they course read these kind of books this one and others they should read my okay. first book survive the economic collapse to get ready for the next crisis because right. people and, and you know the media who never wanted to talk about such such a books, which are serious books. This is not just a guy who says, you know, buy cans. We give a lot of details. You know, this is a this is a this is a good piece of reading. We have graphics, we have data, we have a lot of you know we have uh, we have uh, diagrams on, on on how things work and so on, and it's easy to read for everyone. And and because you have guidelines on on how you can prepare the most efficiently the most uh, effectively. And uh, so that's what they should do. And maybe they should also start to think uh, in the next election cycles. I know you and I don't really believe in, in, in elections and politics and so on, but maybe yeah. they should put the message in, in the ballot box saying, you know, we want people who have the balls to react fast when there are such a crisis and right. that protect the nation and the people instead of ideologies and things like that so you know to be smart the next time you have to vote it's not easy but uh but maybe maybe you have to think into that absolutely absolutely 
All right. Well, I think we should probably wrap up here, but uh, uh, I get, thank you for uh, taking some time uh, to advise us and, uh, you know, uh, thanks for coming on Start, Start the World. You're welcome. All right. Uh, stay safe and stay sober.